Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to everyone who's coming on. Welcome to all my replay viewers. Thanks so much for showing up. Um, if this is your first time with me, my name is Keely. I'm the owner of lovehopeadventure.com, where I blog about the marriage relationship, um, intimacy in marriage, how to have a deeper relationship with your spouse, and I also sometimes do lifestyle posts and general um, homemaking and that sort of thing. So I'm going to turn my camera around so I can see you guys, or rather, so you can see me. Thank you so much for joining me, and if this is your first time with me, welcome. Um... Today, I wanted to talk about a question that was given to me by one of my viewers, and they wanted me to do a scope on some things that you can do about sexual intimacy when you can't have sex. Um, and this particular viewer was talking about, um, say, when a woman is on her period, or maybe uh, she's going through postpartum or been put on pelvic rest due to maybe UTIs or because she's pregnant and she needs to be on pelvic rest for some reason. Um, but also there are plenty of other times in which having sex is very hard for a couple. Um, maybe they are not together with each other, so the couple is apart. Uh, or maybe somebody has had surgery recently, or maybe there's just physical ailments that is keeping them from having sex. So what do you do? I'm sorry. I'm, I see that I'm doing all this with my hair. It's like wrapped around my neck or something. I'm just going to straighten out now. Um, so I get this question a lot because I have readers say to me, well, what do I do when I'm on my period? Or what do I do when my spouse is out of town? Or my spouse you know, and I aren't together for some reason. How do I deal with this during this period of time in my life? I just had a baby. Having sex right now is not possible for me. What do I do? And um, so I think the answer to all of those different scenarios is going to be different. It's going to be unique to you as a person. It'll be unique to your situation. Um, and it will also be based off of what you and your spouse decide is okay. So I'm going to talk about some things today that might make you feel a little uncomfortable or maybe you think, well, that isn't um, a Christian thing to do or I don't agree with that. Look, if you don't agree with something that I'm suggesting, please, for the love, don't think I'm telling you you need to do it. Uh, when it comes to sex and intimacy in your bedroom, this is really between you, your husband, and God. And you really have to make sure that you are honoring the Lord with the things that you do in your bedroom. So if you don't feel you can honor the Lord with some of the things I'm suggesting today, then don't do it. Uh, but there are there are other people out there that do feel they can honor God and do these things. So, um, somebody says they are postpartum, so this scope is going to be so helpful. Now, I have had three boys, and all three of them were C-sections. They tell you you're supposed to wait to have sex for about eight weeks, at least, I think. Um, when you have it vaginally, I think maybe six weeks is what they suggest. Um, I just disclaimer here, I didn't wait much more than four or five weeks to go back to sex. Um, that was a decision I made. I don't think everyone should do that. If you really think you need to go with what your doctors say, please don't go off of what some scoper said. You really need to go off of what you feel is best for your health. And you know your body. So when it comes to having sex postpartum, you know, you need to go with what's comfortable. And if it's hurting, then it's probably not time yet. For you to have um, what they call um, like PIV sex, penis and vagina, right? So it's so much classier to say PIV, I guess, instead of saying what it really is. Uh, so there might be some other options or alternatives for you. Um, as far as having postpartum sex, you really should speak with your doctor about this, okay? Ask them what is okay and what isn't okay. Because it is possible that you can use direct stimulation. You can have your spouse directly stimulate you on your clitoris without penetration. And that might be, that might be okay for you. And your doctor might sign off on that. Um, some of the problem, though, with if you're, you know, having sex with your husband inside of you is you're going to rip stitches. Um, like for me, as a cesarean patient, they stitch up your uterus and stuff on the inside. They're really worried about you breaking open organs and things. You know what I mean? Um, so vaginal birth, maybe you've had some stitches or maybe other things are just trying to heal up. But that doesn't necessarily rule out stimulation in other ways. 
So uh, you can definitely talk with your doctor about that. Again, I am not signing off on you doing any of this stuff without talking with your doctor in regards to postpartum or if you've been put on pelvic rest, uh, maybe because you've had a UTI or maybe because you're at a point in your pregnancy where pelvic rest has to occur because who knows why they're putting you on that or if it's been some other surgery and they're asking you to stop having sex for a period of time go with what your with what your doctor says however if you if your doctor says it's okay you might consider a letting your spouse stimulate you using their hands um, i know that in postpartum you're probably bleeding a lot and you probably don't want your spouse stimulating you with his mouth but if you are far enough along and you're not bleeding anymore and you do feel confident with that, that might be a really good alternative for you. Um, and also, if you want to use a vibrator, that can work too. And that's where I was saying, some people aren't going to be okay with that. Some people are going to be like, oh, no, 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 that is not coming to my bedroom. And I completely respect that. And I don't think you should ever bring something into your bedroom that makes you feel like you are not honoring God. So, uh, but there are vibrators out there and there are plenty of Christian friendly um, sex toy stores that you can purchase something like that from. You can actually just buy it at Walmart anymore. You don't have to go into a sex toy store and I just kind of suggest you don't ever do that because there is nothing in them that you cannot find in a safer environment. So um, you can use something like that and as far as sex on your period goes, I know some people actually don't have a problem having sex on their period. So they say Maybe the husband can just wear a condom, or maybe they wait until they're light enough so that it's not making as big a mess. Maybe they have sex in the shower. And guys, I talked to you guys about this the other day. Sex in the shower, I do not know how that happens, but if you can do it, good on you. Some people say to do that. I don't know. If you're like, there is no way I'm having sex on my period because that's just gross and it doesn't feel great for me, but I do want to be sexually intimate with my spouse, if you want to orgasm, while you're in your period and you don't want to deal with the blood, again, manual stimulation, a, a sex toy might be okay for you, like a vibrator or something, that can work. And you can do that during your period. Um, if you want to be sexually intimate with your spouse without orgasming, because, you know, you, that's okay if you don't get that route. Um, then consider just really spending a lot of time making out, hugging each other, holding on each other. I will tell you that doesn't work for me because if I have spent a lot of time with my spouse in that way, I am going to want something to happen. So that doesn't work for me, but for some couples, extra cuddling and things like that does help them and they enjoy that. Uh, so if that's you, do it, but... If it causes you to just get really riled up and be left hanging, that's probably not the best idea for you during an emotional time, right? So you really need to have a lot of communication with your spouse. And when it comes to postpartum, guys, I know this sounds really harsh, but this is just a very short period of time in your life. And it sucks, and it's hard, and it's difficult, and it stretches you as a couple. But you might just have to say, we're not going to be sexually intimate like I'm not going to have my sexual needs met during this period of time because I got to let my body heal now does that mean that you're you can't please your husband in some way and give him that release no you can choose to do that for him and you can say this is a period of time where I I want to invest in my marriage I want to invest in my sex life with my spouse and while I know I can't have anything right now I am going to please him you mean to make that decision for yourself. If it causes you to feel resentful or to feel um, used in some way, please don't. But if you want to do it as a service to your spouse, as a way to keep connecting with them, even if you're not receiving the um, sexual pleasure and stimulation, you can do that. Uh, and I don't think you should feel pressured to do that, but I do think you need to be aware of your spouse's needs. And this is a hard hard time. Postpartum is so hard and you're already feeling exhausted because you have babies up all night and you're already feeling like, wow, um, my needs aren't getting met. I can't go to the bathroom without putting a baby on my lap. I can't eat anything without holding somebody. 
you know, I'm, I'm in pain as it is. Maybe you've got hemorrhoids you're dealing with. Maybe you've got, you know, surgery pain or maybe other pain from tears and things. And so you're just feeling all out miserable. And during this time, it's really important that you openly communicate with your husband that you do still need needs met. Even if you have to put your sexual needs on hold for a couple of weeks while you're healing, really share with your spouse the other things that you need for him to do for you. Um, and this way you can still feel close. And I know how frustrating it is to get riled up and not be able to have sex. It's very frustrating. It's very difficult. But you can get through it. And this is a passing season for you. Now, on more of a long-term type of thing, you're going to have a period every month until you go through menopause. And I don't know anything at all about menopause sex or what that does to your body or those types of hormones, guys. So I can't really speak to that. But with your period, you and your spouse definitely need to come up with a game plan. What are we going to do during that week? Are we going to abstain from sex, both of us? Neither one of us are going to be um, orgasming and physically pleased in that way and we're just going to focus on other areas of our marriage or are we going to stimulate one another manually whether um, it be with your husband with his hand or maybe with a vibrator or maybe um, you are uh, pleasing him with your hand or your mouth obviously you're probably not going to want your husband down there when you're bleeding with his mouth probably not I know I wouldn't I don't think anybody should do that. It's probably very, very bad for you health-wise. Um, so decide that. Are we going to stimulate one another during my period week? Um, if so, what day? Am I going to be okay to do this on the first or second day when I'm my heaviest? Are we going to need to kind of wait until maybe midweek and it's been three or four days and things have kind of like leveled out for me? Or what? And so you and your spouse need to make those decisions ahead of time. And also, it's really important that you're tracking your period because this way you guys can have sex as close to the last night of your period as uh, before your period starts as possible. And if you know when it's going to start, then you need to be purposeful and intentional and say, I will probably start my period in the next day or two. So let's have every sex, uh, let's have sex every day we can until it happens. And this way, you're both feeling satisfied for a few days so you can get over some of that heavier bleeding or at the very least. So if you choose not to do anything for the week sexually until your period is done, then you guys have less number of days. Now there are benefits to both guys. There are benefits to waiting the week and not having sex for the whole week because when you come back together, it is so amazing to have those couple of days and you might actually find that you have the best orgasms of your life or maybe you find that this is some of the best sex of the month because you guys have had to abstain for seven days or whatever your period is. I don't know what everyone's period is, but I think that's kind of typical five to seven days or something. Or maybe you guys decide midway through the week that you're going to spend some time sexually and you're going to stimulate one another in some manner that um, helps the other person get that physical release. But these things need to be discussed ahead of time. They should be discussed before you get on your period. Um, and if you're currently in postpartum and you and your spouse didn't really talk about postpartum um, before you had the baby, which if this is your first baby, you probably didn't because I know I didn't know to talk about that with my husband. I don't even know if I knew we weren't going to be able to have sex for that many weeks. Honestly, I think I was probably told that like some of my last appointments. Now, you know, you can't have sex, right? And like, what? Um, but you're in the middle of postpartum right now and you've got a few weeks left. You and your spouse need to have some honest conversations so that you can have real expectations with one another. What are we going to do? Are you physically feeling like you can be stimulated in some way um, manually or do you just need to completely abstain? And if so, what is the agreement between you and your spouse going to be? And ladies, I know it's hard when you're on postpartum or when you're on your period and you want to be um, sexually intimate with your spouse and you're feeling like you just can't 
and but they still need it too and you feel like you need to give them something and you're not getting anything i know how frustrating that can be but i want to remind you that it is always passing and that you will um, get through it and you'll be back to that intimate time with your spouse soon it seems like forever it can make you feel very very frustrated though um, but you really need to make some decisions okay how are we going to handle these weeks am i going to please my husband am i going to let him please me in some way is there a way for him to sexually please me through um, you know manual simulation and if not what will i do for him and so you guys got to have these conversations i know it's not easy i know it's difficult uh, but those are some ideas and and because a lot of times you're asked not to have sex because they don't want anything inside of you breaking stitches open and stuff find out from your doctor is it okay if if my husband uses his hand on me is it okay if we use a vibrator just on the outside find out from your doctor if that's okay and um in the meantime if you guys decide not to be sexually intimate work on intimacy in other areas and I'm going to tell you something, this is a great time for you and your spouse to, to, to communicate to each other more. Um, when I was dating Austin and we were, we, we dated for five and a half years and um, we didn't kiss after like year number two. So we spent about three years not kissing, not being um, physically affectionate with one another at all. And I will tell you, that's probably one of the best things we ever did in our relationship because it required us to communicate on a deeper level. We could not just make out because we were having, um, because we were happy with each other. We couldn't make out to fix fights. We couldn't um, kiss each other for celebrations or anything. So everything that we did for one another to communicate was all through our words. It was through our actions. It wasn't through physical means. And so this period of time, whether it's because you're in your period or because you've gone through postpartum or possibly because you've dealt with surgeries or something and you can't have sex right now, then if you aren't going to um, stimulate one another sexually, then focus a lot on your communication. And this is a great time for that. Um, but I do really caution you both to make sure that you're staying faithful to each other during these periods of time if you're not getting off on your own and pleasing yourselves or, or going down other avenues, all right, this is a time when temptation is going to be really hard for you and your spouse. There's times of celibacy. It is. And you need to guard your mind and your spouse needs to guard his mind and work together on the solution to this problem. So uh, I don't know the right answer for you. Those are a couple of ideas that you can use. And I hope that you will really have these conversations with your spouse um, and talk it through and be open and honest. Just have these naked conversations. This is what I'm dealing with. This is how I'm feeling. What can we do about it? How do we work through it? And you might not even come up with a very good solution. But remember, it's passing. It's a passing phase. And eventually you'll be back to where you were before and you guys can move forward. So... I hope I've encouraged you in some way during this period of time, uh, whatever you're dealing with. And um, if you'd like to see what I've been blogging about, go over to lovehopeadventure.com. I should be on tomorrow around the same time. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining in. And if you have any questions for me, like I said, this was a Skype for um, somebody who gave me a question. You can feel free to tweet at me if it's not a private question. You can ask me here in the scope if it's not a private question. Um, I mean, I don't mind if you ask private questions, but you, I do know that some people don't want to be like, hey, how do I, whatever, in the bedroom on Twitter. Um, or you can go to my website, lovehoodadventure.com. I have a contact page where you can get my email address and send me a message. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.